at 6 o'clock. During May, we often think about our moms. Just last week was Mother's Day, celebrating the women in our lives who've mm. sacrificed everything for our well-being. Yeah, for most, it was a joyous time, right? Mom together with her children. But for others, Mother's Day is a reminder of the pain, an empty hole permanently in their hearts. That pain because they lost a child to Charlotte's gun violence. This year alone, there have been 34 homicides, families broken, moms searching for answers. And tonight, Jamie, WBTV is hearing from mothers who know what it means to lose a child. They're emotional stories, and you're going to hear them for the first time as they all speak with our Brandon Hamilton. Brandon's here tonight in the studio. Brandon, you are in the community often, often at crime scenes. What do these moms tell you they want everyone to know? Well, Molly, Jamie, the pain is indescribable for what these brave women have felt and continue to live with. I went back with them individually to the exact place their son was killed. The hope is by sharing their story. It's not only to touch someone, but maybe for you watching to know that violence is not worth it. And for you, the mom that has lost a child to know there are shoulders you can lean on. Strong, keep your head up. That's what my son always told me. Each mom the and their right. stories. No blood. I don't come by here because, yeah. you know, but I'm going to do it today. Personal pain from losing a child to Charlotte's gun violence. Hey God, give him the strength. Meet Gwen Davis. October the 8th, 2006. That was the date. Right there. And I this the is the corner. Parkway Avenue and Tuckasegee Road. Gwen's 18-year-old son, Travis, would take his final breath. On Sunday, y'all went to his girlfriend's house to get his, get his hair braided because I didn't know nothing about no hair. So he had a curfew. This particular Sunday night, he went home to curfew. Gwen called Travis's girlfriend. He wasn't with her. This is my first time coming here since my son been dead. Tears from a hurting mother. <laughs> this way it all happened when his life ended right here. My heart you know, my every day. <laughs> my heart aches every day. I miss my Travis so much. But I got 18 wonderful years on him. Can't nobody take that away. He got a daughter. She's 16. He never got to see. She was pregnant when, she, when he got killed. She looked just like him. Being strong is something mom Kayshawn Simon can attest to. For her, the street is Brookshire Boulevard. It's also her first time returning to the place where her 20 year old son, Jaquan, was murdered. He always called me Dukes. He don't call me mom, he just called me Dukes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be like Happy Mother's Day, Dukes, or Merry Christmas, Dukes. Jaquan was shot multiple times. He died June the 4th of 2022. He was with a few of his friends, well, his cousins, and um, the car was shot up. These mothers are really hurting. This is a pain that runs very deep. That's him right there. Pain that Chandra Farrer knows all too well. Her 21-year-old son, Davion's life ended on March the 24th, 2021. For Chandra, the pain lives along Beatty's Ford Road. It was here. And so he was shot at the he store. He was shot. He was shot at the store. He ran across the street. He fell in the street, actually, and was okay. shot again. He got up, landed there. As she learns to cope with her son being gone, each day a new lesson. As a mom, she stays strong. All I can do is tell him, be safe. Be safe. And I always tell your kids you love them, because you never know if it's the last time. Gun violence, the tie that binds these grieving mothers together. They know they're not alone. As moms are celebrated in May, they're missing a big piece of their hearts. Another holiday, you know, we're supposed to be celebrating moms. Moms are supposed to feel loved, but it has to feel different for you. It does. Um, it's painful. I have two other sons, um, and they do try to make me feel better. He will demand to be the first one to come in. He's gonna <laughs> demand to come in with those. And it's always roses. It'd be rough, I start off with, but my day end up good. 
because I know my mom and Travis is looking down on me. Eighteen, twenty, and twenty-one years old, yeah. and they're gone. It's just it's so senseless. But those moms going back to the site where they died was really powerful. You said that they had not gone to those sites before. Now and it was emotional, especially with Gwen. I mean, her son was two thousand six when he was murdered, and all of those years she had never gone back. And to right. go back with me, mm -hmm. well, to just was share emotional. her story yeah. with all of us on what yeah. that means to yeah. a mother, mm -hmm. <laughs> and what that means, and the gun violence is doing to our community. Yeah. And um, in Gwen and Chandra's case, a suspect was arrested. Now, okay, Sean, she's still waiting on arrest and her son's murder. And coming up on On Your Side tonight with Jamie Bowl, that's mm -hmm. about an hour. These moms, we, they came together again to talk about just about the sisterhood that mm -hmm. they shared. So, and also, um, as we talk about it, how can we as a community mm -hmm. move forward? So, again, that's coming up on On Your Side tonight. Yeah, they're not alone. No. no. And the question we keep asking over and over, how do we make it stop, yeah. right? Brandon, we'll see you at 7. Thank you. Let's go back.